Hi, I'm Shaheen Tusi. This is part B of part one of layout and lighting within inside of V-Ray for Nuke. Uh, this week, I'm going to be talking about hold down and edges and talking about a couple of the other issues that I had when I was working with the shot and also uh, show you, you know, show what I basically showing you what I learned from my mistakes. Now, what happened is when I did the photogrammetry for the shot, uh, because there wasn't enough frames at the end, there was a problem with the solve. And you can actually see it in this frame quite clearly. Like here, the photogrammetry is holding out too much. So we've lost this edge completely. And I've got a similar problem at the end. You can see there, that is really, really fat. You know, some of the ways that you can fix this. So one would have been to go back to to actually sit there and model it properly and get it working really light. Uh, I'm not a great modeler, and the guy who was modeling in Constantine, his time was very precious. So we basically we came up with a technique to get uh, to resolve this problem. Now, what I'm going to show you is um, new very Nuke's ability to work with projections really well and how I can use roto shapes to drive holdouts inside of the software. So right now we know what our problem area is, is this, uh, this rock in the foreground. So what I've done is I'll bring in my photogrammetry and here I just set it to a matte surface. Now whatever shade is applied down, you know, underneath the tree, the matte surface properties will always still be there because they are, they are affecting the core of the geometry. Now you don't necessarily need to do matte surface just for the V-Ray object prop. You can use something else called a V-Ray MTL wrapper. This has matte surface as well, but what this does, it does it on a shader level. Uh, matte surface uh, object prop does it on a whole geometry level. So if you have a particular part of a geometry, you want to put like a, you know punch a hole through but you don't, you know, you don't want to do the massive sculpting. You can do that with V-Ray MTL blend and using V-Ray MTL wrapper and all that stuff. But right now what I'm going to do is just use a V-Ray object prop. And what I've done is I've projected on my frame and I've applied an, uh, just a simple shader and I got this opacity set to red. And if I go ahead and enable that, Right, so it's going to completely, uh, all our holdout is going to go is because there's no alpha there. So if I jump into this one and do a quick roto shape, then we jump back into the render. And now we're using a roto to hold out the geometry, which is pretty awesome because I can even do stuff like feathering. And what this does, is that if I go to geometry that's quite fat, I can just do my roto, uh, just do a roto, which I was planning to do anywhere, and I can use that to sculpt it. So um, what's the advantage and disadvantage with this? I'll probably one thing I should definitely cover. The advantage is that once you render, you get a great render out of the box. The disadvantage is that if you did what I did, which is when a bit sloppy on your roto and you don't notice it, you'll have to go back and completely re-render everything, which I did do that a couple of times because I was just trying to rush through the roto. So um, let's actually go ahead and jump into that. So now we understand this. It's just such a it's just a basic projections with roto. And always bear in mind you do need a crop after your roto shape because bounding V8 doesn't really like bounding boxes. So here I got the layout geometry and there I'm just doing a basic uh, straightforward comp just to get all the depth queuing and hold out, make sure everything tests it and worked. So while I was waiting for Constantine, you know, I was just rocking and rolling. Now I'm going to show you some other stuff. So let's go on that thesis where uh, the mistake I made, where I screwed up the roto several times. And I'm going to show you how to overcome that problem. So first, um, don't do the holdout. That's the first way to uh, overcome that problem. Basically, what you want to do is that you want to just have your basic geometry there, but you don't want to do a matte surface, but you do want it to just do some basic uh, GI, some basic occlusion like it's done over here. Now, uh, let's start talking about how to pull this off without making the same mistakes that I did. Now, you're starting to notice some deep nodes, and yes, V-Ray for Nuke now supports deep renders. 
and how do you activate that and this is what I'm going to really cover today. So what I've done instead, uh, what I did before, I've now just gone ahead and applied a simple shader on my roto shape to each individual object. So let's break out this group and have a look inside what I've done. Yeah. So here's a photogrammetry user shader with the projection. But this time I'm not using a read node. I'm using something called a V-Ray text bitmap. So this is kind of like a V-Ray proxy, but it's for textures. So instead of letting new to do a lot of caching and processing of the texture, to send it back, to give it to V-Ray to do translation and so forth, uh, this will just completely divert and you can send the texture straight into V-Ray for rendering. So this is something I'm gonna cover more in detail next week. And here, what I've gone ahead and done is just simply just said which channels I want to use and just fit them through. Now, the reason why I kept color on is because, uh, well, I just wanted to later on identify what robot is for what. Now, let's talk about doing deep renders inside of Nuke. So let's double click on the VR render node and look for the deep options. Now, you would probably expect a tab, but the V-Ray deep is actually a little bit hidden. It's on the global and in music and there it is deep so vera gives you a couple of deep options actually so what it does is giving you deep by id then you have deep by merge now this is the deep that we are all are interested in so deep by merge gives you the option to set how many deep samples you want in space for example like if i would go ahead and create a vera render node and look at the global music and what the deep option is for YZ, it's set to one. So in every depth unit, it will set one deep samples. Now that's, um, it's a little bit cheaper when you're doing a deep render, it's a bit smaller, but you start like for uh, volumetric rendering, um, volume rendering, uh, you start to notice little problems, like you get like a little skip forward in the depth. And what this option, the deep threshold does, it lets you choose like how many deep samples you want in the middle. So right now I pretty much set it to not, not want one, which means uh, uncompressed deep. So this is now raw deep. To activate deep, you just need to create any deep node that's connected after nuke and render it. Done. So this part I highly recommend pre-render your deep because don't try to keep it live now. You can if you want, but it starts causing a lot of other problems later on. And you want to do exactly the same for your main island. Now, I asked uh, a couple of weeks ago, that because I noticed something. It's like when I was trying to do this, uh, this part of the tree upstream, um, the channels, your AOV passes were not getting generated in deep as well. Uh, that can happen, but in this case, it wasn't happening. And I asked the developer why. Uh, he asked me the instance, do you really need to render deep AOVs? Do, can you do deep shuffle and deep grade, deep plus, deep divide? Unfortunately, we can't do all those operations, so it kind of makes sense not to have it. So you can get an RGB deep render, but you can't get your AOV passes passed through. And then what you want to do is just turn off some of your lights, which for some reason are switched on, and I guess that's a bug that I have to report. So I'll just plug in my deep and my deep render. And what happens at the end, what I'll do is just a simple deep recolor. And I'll just do a deep holdout. Uh, the little transformation I'm doing is that I needed to offset the axis by Y by one, just to resolve my little issue. And it's gone ahead and done that. Oops. I didn't render a full deep sequence. So like, to be honest, I didn't do the shot in deep because at the time it didn't exist as a function. And I thought it would have been better just to do with stuff, with projections and holdouts, but that proved to be a lot more painful. So uh, right now it's just basically doing a regular render with my all my AOV passes and it's doing some death queuing and all that jazz to get it working. Cool, so uh, that's the basics of holdout, roto shapes, and deep. Um, thanks for watching. Come back next week for shader assignments and uh, basic look dev. Bye.